Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. I'm back. I have a new power supply. It is stronger than ever, and hopefully it will get me through this cast. Now, I am going to go back to basically the speedrun format just for this cast because I want to get you guys a game of FA because I haven't done that since the middle of last week. And I feel terrible about it, but I could not help it because of computer problems. And if you're saying, well, I didn't know you had computer problems, you should watch the Voice of Insanity playlist because if I have any news, updates, or random thoughts about life, I post it over there and you would know what's going on. So, shameless self-plug finished. Let's go ahead and jump into this cast. We have the crazy American taking Cybern versus Godless Heathen. It as Seraphim. And I gotta say, this is, as far as the name goes, a match made in heaven. Because this is basically the uh, stereotypes that the European countries and Americans have of each other to a certain extent. So, <laughs> basically we get to see which stereotype wins. Alright, without further ado, let's go ahead and see where this game will take us. Um, right off the bat, I can see we've got first land, second air for Crazy American, and he is throwing down a whole bunch of power generators to accommodate that, and we have first land expansion from Heathen. Now, I am guessing that we're going to get early bomber off of this build, because that is really the only reason to go that direction, and it will actually play perfectly against Godless Heathen in this situation, because Heathen is not building an air factory that's going to force him into mobile anti-air production and probably lose him a few engineers if crazy american can pull that off and you can see that both players are building an absolutely ludicrous amount of land factories we have one initially and then we've got three five eight planned and then on the northern side we have just a bunch that is a dozen or so uh, I don't know that Crazy American will be able to fully utilize all of those unless he can get his hands on a pile of Reclaim and all of his expansion mass extractors, but hopefully he will be able to make use of them. I wish him the best with that building project. Now, this is an incredibly spammy map that you have to play strategically. The map is Open Palms, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. It is a very popular one versus one map. It leads to some highly entertaining games, but I hate to play on it because it takes way too much concentration than I feel like investing in a game as far as one that I'm playing myself, and I always get sideswiped by raids. You have this loop around the back, you have wide open sides, and they have a huge open battlefield in the center, mesas to each side that you can capture with uh, engineers if you drop them over there. Now this is actually a huge surprise. We have air factory built out here next to the hydro, and it got a bomber off before Crazy American was able to build anything out of his factory. He is now building an interceptor to try to go kill that thing. The bomber is zipping around merrily, on this edge engineer pulling dodges here left and right trying not to die uh that's gonna suck to lose that expansion engineer but i think it will happen eventually and continuing to dodge nicely done by crazy american i don't know what his proper name is what name he had before but he is doing a very fine job of keeping that engineer alive bomber is basically completely confused and there is nothing that the other player can do about it. Bomber is going to loop around once again for another turn. This time Interceptor is going to fall in behind it and shoot it down. That Engineer is finally, finally free to continue building on its way to the right. And in this time, Godless Heathen has, in addition to... Well, he wasn't really microwing the Bomber. He was basically letting it circle. He has risen to a 14 mass advantage over crazy american and has a substantial amount of units online and then has pushed up in the center here this group of tanks is going to die this single tank is going to be a hero and take out a mass extractor and damage another but overall not much damage done but uh in the time that crazy american was microing that engineer around trying not to let it get killed um he lost a whole lot of attention that he should have been paying elsewhere and you'll have to pardon me for stumbling a bit. I'm having trouble keeping my tongue attached to my thoughts. I haven't casted in a while, so I'm speeding through my thoughts as I go, and it's not working out the best for me, but I will get back up to speed as I move along. 
Um, got Mantis moving down this side. Brilliant bit of wall segments here. I really wish that engineer would have finished it because that would have been hilarious for a huge attack force like this to be denied by one engineer and some walls. But the Mantis are going to slip through. Mantis, Manti, Mantises, something like that. And uh, going to harass some of these mass extractors. And then both of these groups are going to get around the outside edges and get back into the base. And then on the northern side here, Heathen has decided that he really is not content with his own territory. Manifest Destiny is not going to work out for Crazy American. And uh, yeah, he's going to lose his expansion to the east. I was tempted to make a rather lewd comment there, and I will refrain from doing so. Haven't really done it yet in a cast. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Personal choice, I guess. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, man. Places your mind goes while you're watching a game like this. Crazy American is going to single-handedly attempt to deny all of these Thams, and he will actually succeed. Now you may say, well he had a huge advantage, why didn't uh, Crazy, why did Heathen not attack Crazy American's ACU with that? Well, that would be sacrificing a ton of tanks into an ACU that would probably not kill the ACU and then you have no more tanks. The ACU is generally worth around 20 tanks in its unupgraded form, depending on maybe landing two strategic overcharges and a good bit of micro. So. If you have an attack group of this size, theoretically you could kill the ACU, but the ACU had a bunch of backups right over here that it could easily bring down and crash into this group of Thams. And that would basically lose Godless Heathen his entire attack force for no benefit whatsoever. So that is the reasoning behind that. And you should definitely keep that in mind. The very, very few one versus ones that I've played, I actually lost a couple of them because I tried to kill the opponent's ACU too early and it just didn't work out for me and I ended up having nothing left to defend myself with. And here we have an overextension of too small of a group of tanks. That is going to get pinned in between these two groups which are then going to give chase the Mantis due to their high run speed. It's actually going to bypass these and escape the Ilshivas that are now on the field. Godless Heathen has managed to get Tech 2 up and operational, and that is going to be a tremendous boon to his efforts because the Ilshivas are amazing. Let's all face it, it is a fact. And these Mantis over here have, funnily enough, cleaned out the entire backside of Godless Heathen's base, but he is still holding even in Eco. Well, nope, not anymore. Crazed American has jumped to 10 in the lead. Probably a. Tech 2 Mass Extractor coming online somewhere, but no, apparently not. It was just a group of Tech 1 Mass Extractors being built. Okie dokie. Or maybe coming back from a power stall. That could very well be the case. There is a nice little group of Thams down here that could threaten entrance into the expansion over here, but I'm not too terribly worried about it. There's some point defense, some build power, and other things guarding that area. I don't think there's anything to be concerned with. And then Crazy American is going to, with his vast Mantis hordes, overcome this expansion that was stolen from him and continue trucking right on towards the southern edge. And nope, he is going to stop. There was only two Ilshivas there. He should have gone for that, I would think. Wipe out that expansion and take it for himself. And we do have Godless Heathen getting both of the Mesas. Very nicely done there. That is going to give him a little bit of a boost. Hopefully catch him up some. Actually, no, he doesn't need caught up. He is back on top of the mass income charts. Manta's moving in to finally kill those two Ilshis and possibly overtake the ACU. Nope, they are going to stop. I'm going to kill the build power. Godless Heathen is going to make a clean getaway and they need to snag these mass extractors. Yes. It was a very large detonation for a factory. I almost thought it was a power generator standing off and looking at it, but apparently it was not. Tech 2 is on the field for Crazy. He has got two rhinos up, and hopefully some more on the way. 
Yes, he is assisting that factory, th putting down three more Tech 1 air factories. Why he didn't build them in the middle of his adjacency bonus squares, I will never know. But apparently that is his own personal choice. And then on the left, we've got a few Mantis and a single Rhino versus two Ilshis and a bunch of Thams. I think this is going to be a decisive victory in favor of Heathen. And yes, it is. Yes, it is. There's a single Mantis still running around the back end of this base. How is that even possible? And again, great restraint shown by Crazy American and a wise choice, I do believe, having a huge amount of Tech 1 units that he could have swarmed the ACU with, but with these groups of Ilshavas nearby, it would have been a futile effort. We've got engineers repeat building up the edge here. You can see there wasn't a transport. An engineer built a and built a factory from here, and then building another factory up here. Although actually those can run up. I was not aware of that. I didn't know you could edge build this. See, this is what I get for not playing ladder enough. I don't know all of the little ins and outs and intricacies of the maps. You got rhinos and mantis pushing straight up the center. Unfortunately, this is bad micro from Crazy American. He let his units get strung out and feed into this wall of Ilshabas rather than overwhelming it in one single push. And that has cost him the effectiveness of that attack. We now have Ilshabas on two sides and Medusas on the other. All of those units are going to be wasted. And that's pretty much the end of the game. Not the end of the game, the end of the story of this group of units. My brain is betraying me. By the way, I know you guys have already noticed this, but I'm just going to throw it out there. Uh, I did do this in basically a what I used to call speedrun format, and it is not getting any post. And I'm basically just throwing it up onto the YouTube upload because I want to get a cast out, you guys. I may have said that at the beginning. I cannot remember. I'm rambling now. This is what my brain does when I do not occupy it properly for a few days in a row. I'm sure none of you guys have ever experienced this. We've got a tack launcher online, which I don't think has actually killed anything yet. I may be mistaken about that, but I don't... There is a launch trying to kill off. <laughs> it's going to fire at the Thams and Ilshavas and kill one right there. I'm sure none of you guys have ever had the experience of where if you take a break from something that you do on a consistent basis and then you come back after, you know, a week's time or whatever and try to do it again, you just fall all over yourself. Truly humans are ha creatures of habit. And if you do not maintain your habits when you try to come back and pick them up again, it never ends well. And it takes a little while to get back into the swing of things. It is kind of odd how easily it escapes you. It's kind of like playing the piano. I used to play the piano extensively. And now I have not been in steady practice for quite some time. And when I go back and play it, there's all these things that I want to do. And my fingers just will not cooperate. My brain is operating on the proper wavelength. And I'm sending all the commands to my fingers. But my fingers just don't listen. They don't want to do what I tell them to. And apparently that is how my tongue is behaving itself at the moment. This group of Ilshavas, I'm actually quite impressed with the progress here. And the failure to trail from Crazy American. Ilshavas are rather slow. These should have never gotten away from this main attack group. But they have gotten away nonetheless and are moving towards the back. And another nice little group down here. Medusa calmly taking out that Tech 1 artillery a little at a time with its horrendous accuracy and low damage. And the Ilshavas are still moving along. Almost thought that was an upgrade at first, but it was not. Once again, idle group of units. Two Ilshavas have slipped through. If these guys continue to run, I can actually clean out this entire group of engineers in the back here. Very handy targets indeed. It is always good to... You know what? Those engineers may have been dropped earlier. Not entirely sure. I'm thinking possibly... Um, all right, what have we got going on here? A lot of back and forth. This is the incredible spammy mess that is open palms. You can see the poking and the prodding and the manipulation of the map that is going on from both sides. Crazy American 
throwing a loyalist out onto the field. And that one is sadly going to die under the fire of Ilshivas. Ilshivas, they actually do pretty well versus T3 of the other factions. I would build them consistently against early Tech 3. Once you get a critical mass of bricks or percivals or harbingers or whatever else, um, Ilshivas are going to kind of sort of lose their effectiveness, but for the most part, they do compete with Tech 3. Couple that with the fact that Seraphim has really sorry T3 in general, and the result is that basically you want to produce Ilshivas for as long as you can. And uh, Godless Heathen is definitely doing that. He does have a transport over here for some reason. I don't know if he's going to load units on it. Maybe, maybe not. Got a gunship kind of harassing on the edges here. And air control is won by Godless Heathen. He is now going to be free to drop anything anywhere he likes and use gunships as much as he wants, as long as he doesn't get over flak. And we do have T3 on the field, actually. It is right there is the headquarters. Looks like we have Mobile Sands, a Brick, and a Loyalist over that away. Just a single T3 HQ. That is interesting. Usually people convert to more build power, but he only has about 65 mass income. Let's go ahead and take a look at the reclaim. 18k, almost 19. And 21, so relatively close to each other, not really a decisive number for either side. And this is where the Medusas tend to shine. If they can land a hit on these units, they may not be able to. Should be stunning them, but... I, ah, there we go. When the Medusas hit, they stun these higher tier units. You can see they actually do uh, make good use of their mass cost as far as a tech 1 versus a tech 2 and tech 3 unit. So Medusas are always a good thing to have mixed in your army just because they prevent the other unit the other units from firing at you. Awesome brick kiting on the way here. I have a fantastic replay for you guys in my next cast which will return to the normal format that I use. It is a 1 versus 1 and it has a superb amount of T3. I have previewed about half the cast, but I was not comfortable diving into the length of the cast that it is this late on in the day. Uh, but uh, when I do get that out, you're going to see bricks a lot, and the bricks are pretty freaking awesome. And gunships moving around the back. There's actually flak already in place to protect the gunships with. These Ilshivas are still alive in the back, calmly not using his Ilshivas until the gunships could take out that tech one point defense so very wise choices from crazy american in some situations not crazy american godless heathen actually i think godless heathen has consistently made relatively good choices crazy american has seemed to falter slightly in some key areas and it has cost him substantially especially with those ilshivas and there's a couple other places i've noticed that it's been a little bit of lackluster uh, micro and some of that he is the higher rated player I am wondering if he may not be under the influence of something or possibly not trying as hard as he should have been at the beginning of the game considering the rank discrepancy got tech 2 gunships moving through all of these medusas here medusas sitting still taking fire not doing anything to try to fight back not that they can well technically I guess you could ground fire the medusas and hit the Tech 2 gunships, I will give anyone who can do that purposely in a game the strategic avatar icon, or the strategic facepalm avatar, just so you know. Send me a replay of you in a real game, not in a setup situation, in a real game, killing Tech 2 gunships by ground firing Medusas, I will give you that avatar for a while. That would make my day. I might give it to you personally. That is my personal avatar, and I will... I, I, I may actually give that to someone if they can give me a replay for that. I would love the casting game showing it. And Bricks now bearing down on... Oh, this is the end, I think. Ah, uh, 3,000 health, and he's toast! So many Tech 3 units concentrated in the center, just hammering down through the middle. 
And that is the end of the godless heathen. The crazy American wins. But as you can see, it is with damaged eco, not very many expansions intact, and basically just catching the ACU in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, Crazy American doesn't really have enough units to respond with, so that is a major problem. But that is the power of the brick versus the Seraphim. Once you get a critical mass of bricks put together, it's really basically impossible for the Seraphim to stop it unless you have a T4 online or two or a horrendous amount of sniper bots that you can kite with. It's a really difficult situation. Alrighty guys, that is going to get me back into the FAF game. Not my best material ever, I realize, but it is FA and it is uploaded and you have watched it. So kudos to you folks who stuck with me through it all. And I will see everybody in the next cast for a fantastic game in the regular format. And I will get it out to you guys in a couple of days. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.